Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Jonathan Ross Show. We have got a great program lined up for you tonight, so let's have a look at who's in my green room. We also have on the show a multi-talented actor. She starred in massive hits like Luther, His Dark Materials and The Affair, of course. It's Ruth Wilson! <laughs> just to clarify, if you've just joined us, Harry is on the left. <laughs> Bacon Harry is on the right. Bacon <laughs> Styles. We don't have a picture of what he looked like afterwards when it was cooked, but the man who sent it in said it looked a bit more like David Dickinson. So, uh... <laughs> Um, it wasn't the end. Let's get my first guest out. It's Ruth Wilson and Greg Davis. Hello. You look amazing. Hey. Hey. Oh, Dave, as I said, Dave's fine. I'm sorry. Great to have you here. Thank you for coming in. Hey, now, that was a lovely reaction from the audience, wasn't that? Yes. Yeah. 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 Do you always get that kind of reaction? Because you've played a, a lot of characters who I think people are a little bit wary of. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, a few. What kind, <laughs> of, uh, what kind of reaction do you get? Um, generally quite nice. Although, yeah, Alice Morgan, I got a few... Uh, people tend to be quite scared of me, um, which isn't a bad thing. So Alice was in Luther, of course. And she Alice... was... Was she actually a psychopath? Yes, yes. <laughs> all blown psychopath. Um... And I would walk down the street. It was one day I was walking down the street with a friend of mine and someone screamed at me. Well, at, not at me, actually. Screamed at my friend. What are you doing with her? Like, she's a psycho. Get away. <laughs> <laughs> she's dangerous. <laughs> Leave her alone. Greg, what kind of reaction? I was in a hotel. I was on, tour, on my own tour. And I was in um, the hotel bar with my support act, Barry, afterwards. <laughs> and um, a very drunk woman burst into the hotel and went... Oh, my God. Oh, my God, I can't believe it's you. I can't believe... And she threw herself at me. And believe me, this doesn't happen to me much. People just <laughs> shout Gilbert at me normally. She threw herself at me and sat on my knee and was stroking my face and saying, this is the best day of my life. I cannot believe I've met you at last. And um, I was really loving it, Ruth. <laughs> and then her friend dragged her off, uh, saying, leave him alone, leave him alone. She was there for about a quarter of an hour. And then just before she left the room, she turned back and she went, I can't believe I've met Martin Clunes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I mean, and, uh, for, the, for the rest of the tour, my support act, every single morning, sent me a different picture of Martin Clunes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're known as an actor as much as... I mean, you do the comedy and the present on the side, but really, I think of you more as an actor these days. Do you? Yeah. Well, you're the first person to ever say that. Well, I'm, I'm delighted. Thank but you. normally when I see you, you Especially are... when I'm sitting next to a proper actor. <laughs> <laughs> but you tend to get, obviously, because of your size, I guess it's limited the roles you can play, or you, or you certainly get, I guess, approached for certain kind of roles, don't you? It, it, it has happened to me so many times that someone from my management rings me up all excited saying, oh, my God, a big film role's come in for you. And every time I say to them, it's just a tall bloke, isn't it? <laughs> They're just asking. They've just gone through the register of tall men. <laughs> yeah. And it's just some tall bloke, and it always is. But the worst ever was um, uh, the person from my management rang and went, Ridley Scott's people have been on the phone. Wow. And they've asked for you personally. And I went, they haven't. <laughs> and they went, no, they have. It's for the alien prequel, <laughs> Prometheus. It's a named part. <laughs> And they want you. I went, they don't want me. <laughs> they're just looking for a tall person. And I got there, and the audition was to play uh, an alien who was mute. <laughs> and was in the first fucking ten seconds of the <laughs> film. And c shall I show you my audition? Yeah, please. <laughs> this is it. Imagine, imagine this is a stone that they put down. <laughs> I had to I come out... I had to come out from behind the thing. The casting man was there. I had to come out like this. <laughs> <laughs> and... <laughs> an acting masterclass. And you didn't get it? I, and I didn't get it. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe they just decided to go in a different direction. Yeah, it must have been. OK. <laughs> Ruth, let me talk to you, because Ruth is about to do what sounds like an amazing project. 
OK? And I've <laughs> never heard of anything quite like this before. It's called The Second Woman. Yes. OK? Maybe I should get you to describe it, because yeah. I, I'm not sure I necessarily would do it justice. This is at the... It's going to be the, the Young Vic... Yeah. ..for one night, one day and night, on the 19th and 20th of May. Yes, yeah, so it's a 24-hour performance piece. It's one scene that's been inspired by a John Cassavetes film called Opening Night. Right. And I do that same scene with a hundred different men, um, none of which I've met before, and most of them are non-actors. And it's a hundred men over the course of 24 hours. So one, so if we go and see it, yes. the people who go and see it, they would see it, if they stayed the full, they could stay the full 24 hours. They could, yeah, they could go out for toilet breaks and come back, but yeah, they could stay for 24 hours, and they'd see a hundred men performing this scene with me. So what's the, the I can see the challenge for you, but it's gonna, that must be an experience unlike any other. I know you haven't done it yet, but that will be very, very different to anything you've done before. Yeah, no, it's mad. It's mad. I, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of madness. I don't quite know why I'm doing it, but I, I was offered this like three years ago before COVID, and I've had three years to change my mind, and I haven't, so. <laughs> I'm doing it. I'm still so, doing it. But you said you don't really know where you're doing it, but there must be... What, what is well, it, it about... It scares me. It's really scary. I don't know if I'm going to survive. I don't know how I'm going to deal with that. I mean, it's... I don't know if I'll... I'll, be, I'll, I'll stay awake, but I don't know if I'll be very professional well, look, <laughs> after three hours of doing the same thing. Well, the, words, the words in the scene will start to mean nothing after Absolutely a while. Absolutely nothing. And I'll, it will feel like a mad sort of Groundhog Day nightmare. <laughs> Yeah. And I, I, am I right in thinking backstage you asked Greg if he would do it with you? I did, yeah. Ruth said, would you like to be in my project? And I got incredibly excited. And now <laughs> I hear there's a hundred non-actors. <laughs> <laughs> I see where I fit <laughs> in all of a sudden. Does, does the scene start with a gigantic mute man walking yes. out? Yes! He can do that. Rock? How about you do that? Oh, come, come on. on. Can yeah. I dress as an alien? You can. Yeah? You can do whatever you like. You're watching Ridley. Like, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to make light of what seems like a very genuinely fascinating project, Rick. No, you can't but make I'm, light of it. Personally, I'm sick of playing tall characters, so I'm going to strap my shoes onto my knees. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be the same height if you put your shoes on your knees. Do you think? Maybe. OK, come on, let's have a look. <laughs> oh, <well>. <laughs> <laughs> But you underestimated yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe all my height well, in this <laughs> part of my... <laughs> <laughs> OK, so uh, the exciting news is Greg's back on TV uh, playing The Cleaner. I don't know if you saw the first series. I loved The Cleaner. I thought it was amazing. Thanks. And you're back now, 9.30 on BBC One, which you write this as well, don't you? This is the, the new series of The Cleaner, Friday at 9.30 is on BBC One. Have a look at this. <laughs> That's The Cleaner, Friday night, 9.30, BBC One. So, in the first series, you had some great guest stars in it. There was, of course, Helena Bonham Carter, who was amazing. Uh, can you believe that she agreed to so good. act with me? I, I went to meet Helena, who's hilarious, fun. I went to meet her to talk about the show, and we, um, we walked her dogs uh, on, uh, in a park near her house. And um, I'm not used to being papped, <laughs> but a car went by, and she went, we've been papped. And I went, no, no, it, it was just a car drive, she went, we've been papped. Yeah. And I went home, excitedly. <laughs> <laughs> daily Mail. Looking on the Daily Mail. <laughs> and, and, she, and she was right. Sure enough, there was like 27 pictures of us uh, online together. And I was thinking, this is going to be great. They're going to suggest I'm having an affair with Helena Bonham Carter. <laughs> and there was no mention of that. <laughs> and the only thing that was said about me in the whole story, <laughs> they said loads about Helena, obviously, yeah. because she's a legend. They said, Helena opted to rock her trademark kooky style. <laughs> and then underneath it, and this is the only thing that was said about me, Greg opted for a jacket and a hat on his head. <laughs> <laughs> a hat on his fucking head <laughs> is all they can say about me. Uh, stick around, ladies and gentlemen, because we're going to have more from Ruth and Greg. Uh, and after the break, I'll be chatting to Jennifer Aniston and Adam Sandler. See you then. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. I'm still here with Greg and Ruth. OK, uh, Greg, let's talk about early roles, shall we? Let's talk about your early performances, because we know you now... Obviously, Taskmaster is a big hit, Cleaner's a big hit. But when did you start? What were your first TV jobs? What were your first acting roles in television? I went to an audition for a TV job. It was my very first TV wow. role, so I was very excited. And... In the audition, the uh, director was there and he told me, quite rudely, I think, that I was overacting. <laughs> he said, you need to reel this in. 
if you're going to stand a chance, calm down and give us a more measured performance. Yeah. Now, the punchline is, what the show was, it was the Chuckle Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, I want to know what your performance was but, like. But guess what the <laughs> character was? Henry VIII. <laughs> I was playing Henry VIII in the Chuckle Brothers and he told me I was overacting. <laughs> you must have been really overacting. <laughs> I Rubbish. mean, do you... Cos I get the feeling now you think that this was the wrong way, so you weren't overacting. Oh, no, I was. I'm, I'm you almost were. certainly I was, okay. yeah. So you but, were just uh, being I, too big? I loved it. I loved being on the Chocker Brothers. We had... I got the part. I got the part. Cos I, I reeled it in and made Henry VIII more believable. Yeah. <laughs> well, let us be the judge of that. Yeah. Here's the clip. Oh, uh, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is a restrained performance, but I don't know whether <laughs> I would say I believe you're Henry VIII. <laughs> Right. This is Greg back in the day on the Chuckle Brothers. Classic, classic, classic Chuckle Brothers. And a restrained King Henry VIII. Ruth, what about you? What about early? What were your earliest jobs? I guess because you you were kind of like pretty successful pretty straight away in your career, weren't you? Um, yeah, I did. A, I just worked in a little cafe and things like that, and I did a, a little bit of modelling, which I think is what you're referring to. Yes. And. Um, it didn't last very long. It was like a short-lived experience. And so what? You just didn't, you didn't enjoy modelling? I kind of thought it was... I had in my head, you know, black and white shots, kind of artistic. Fashion, arty. Fashion, arty, you know, cool, sexy. My experience was not really that, so... Wait, shall um... we show them what? <laughs> I think this <laughs> is the job right. Go on, you had to... Oh, good. Yeah, you yeah. Got... It's, right. it's, not bad. it's not that bad. It's not as bad as Henry VIII. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, uh, this is Ruth, uh, one of her very... I think it might be your first, but one of your very first modelling jobs. Look at this, here we go. <laughs> oh. 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 That's cute, isn't it? Ms. Magazine. Yeah. The was... spooky issue. The spooky issue. Spooky edition. Yeah, I was 16. That came out, I was just about, I was just starting college, a new college, and I'd done this over the summer. And I was, they had me in bunches, smiling like for hours, hours <laughs> and I had such a painful face. I hated it. I hated it. I wanted to look moody and sexy, and instead I looked like that. Anyway. I think you can still see the serial killer in there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the eyebrows. Put the eyebrows. <laughs> Uh, we're going to meet our next guest now, ladies and gentlemen. They're, they're the stars of the new comedy <laughs> thriller Murder Mystery 2. They're joining us from Paris. Will you please welcome Adam Sandler and Jennifer Aniston? <laughs> I've been told that she gives you a bit of a hard time, though, that Jennifer likes to, to rib you on set. Well, there's plenty to rib, Johnny. You know that. <laughs> she kicked me in the ribs that one time. It was an time. accident. One it was an accident. <laughs> Come on. Murder Mystery 2, Netflix from Friday. I mean, I don't know, Jennifer, yeah. if you've noticed, but normally when one sees photographs of Adam out and about, it just it evokes sympathy and pity. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, it's comfort. It's all you. about the comfort, Jonathan. Yeah. Did, you, did you spend much time with Telly? Did you see him much when you were a kid? When I was a kid, for sure. But I, got, he would, I would get lollipops every year. I would get... A, I got a pink bicycle with a banana seat limp. Yeah. <laughs> Don't go away there because up next we'll be joined out here by Brian Cox, Jasmine Sawyers will be here, and we've got some great music from Arlo Park. See you after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. Let's get my next guest out. I'm so excited he's back on the programme. He's one of the country's finest stage and screen actors, and he's the star of just about the best TV show in the history of television. It's Brian Cox, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Hello. How are you? Hi. Hello. Hi. 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 Thank you for joining us. You look fantastic. What an outfit. Yeah. Thank you, you look uh, very Thank swift you. indeed. Thank you. I've become a fashion icon. Yeah. You look amazing. And I, it's very responsible. You have to be very responsible when apparently you're an icon. Why? Wh what? Where does the responsibility come in? What do you have to? I haven't for? a fucking clue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, so congratulations on Succession. Do we have many Succession fans? <laughs> what an amazing series! What an amazing. It's a roller coaster. 
Sarah Snook, uh, you know, who plays... Uh, Shiv. Shiv, <laughs> yeah. She only found out that she, it, it was actually finishing at the uh, table read of the last episode. <laughs> <laughs> the last episode? Yeah, in the last episode. Uh, the table read in the last episode. She found out that... Did that you she, all know? Did we you all know knew, and we all thought that everybody else knew. I mean, I knew for a while. So everyone else had arranged work <laughs> after this. <laughs> <laughs> She's sitting there thinking, I'm screwed. <laughs> Um, OK, uh, was there a farewell party? Did you have a big kind of, like, farewell, or did you just kind of, like, prepare to say, OK, well, hopefully I'll see you again? We no, we, we had the premiere the other night and did a big dance thing, which was great. It was very joyous. And, uh, and, but we all came. We, we didn't actually arrive at the same time. It was just weird that we suddenly... There we all were, and it was as if by accident, and it was... A really joyous moment. Well, I am grateful to your wife because she sent us a little clip. What? That, yes. <laughs> yes. I know this is a very public space. I thought that was another TV program. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we've got the results of the DNA testing for you. Um, and you are Greg's father. I'm sorry to break it to you this way. Uh, no, no, she sent us a little clip of you at the party, and this is... That's nice to see, isn't that? Lovely. So, Ruth, when you, when you finished uh, Luther, for example, did you have yeah. a, do you have a similar sort of party, a similar farewell to everyone? Yeah, we always have a rap party at the end, and it's yeah. always quite lively. I mean, that was ongoing, that show, so it yeah. never sort of had an end. So did you hang out with Idris quite a lot when you were making In the first season, there was a lot of hanging out. There was a lot of partying in the first season. Yeah. We used to sort of go out in Islington and sort of do pub calls along <laughs> the upper street. I can imagine Idris causes a bit of a stir when he walks into a bar. Yeah, he's pretty tall. He's like you. He's like your height. And, um, you know, everyone notices him. You know they call him the White Idris. <laughs> <laughs> At my behest. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, you know, what about Taskmaster? Because that's a close bunch and you've worked together for a long while. Do you have, uh, do you have a sort of, like, farewell thing at the end of the series or is it much more of a kind of low-key... What, uh, at the end of series? Yeah. Oh, no, it's, it's carnage. It's absolutely <laughs> disgusting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just a load of adults barely able to walk with pizza yeah. smeared all over their faces. <laughs> but Horrible it's... affair. It's not civilised like that. Yeah. But it must be a strange thing, because I guess you do get so close to people, and I guess this is the nature of film and television work, where you have a very intense relationship for a short period, and then you go, and then there's a chance you might not see them again. And, uh, and so you have to, I guess, be ready for that. You have to be yeah, OK with I, that. I think that's the great thing about our profession is we're open to change. And we know that once... I mean, I, I think I... You know, if somebody said to me about the people I've worked with, I could probably, probably remember m most of them I could remember. And I just think it's a wonderful... What, what we do is great in that way. We, we carry the memories of our comrades really with us all the time. Yeah. You know, and uh, it's, it's, it's great. So when you come to a finish, it's no big deal. If you are as excited as I am, and I think everyone, because you're both big fans of Succession yes, as well, huge aren't you? Fans. Yeah. Uh, let's have a little look. I'll tell you. Yeah. Exciting. Yeah. Uh, this is the, the last of a season. I think there are ten episodes, is that right? Yeah, ten. We've got ten. Yeah. You're not meant to ask real life parents this, but I feel I can ask you this because they're not your real life kids. Who is your favourite of your three children? <laughs> Four children. Four children. I'd even forgotten one about the old weird one. <laughs> <laughs> it's not him. It's not the one who's running for president, because you would just... I'm confused. Are you talking about my real children? Well, <laughs> if you'd like to answer that question, then sure, we are. But no, I was asking about your on-screen children. Oh, them! Them! Oh, none of them. <laughs> God, it's got to be the young one. Come on. No, it's no. It's got to be Roman. No. No? Because I want to leave with a bang. Yeah. A really big bang. Connor. Connor. Ah. Ah. Connor. That might be a hint. Bang. Interesting. You blow up Connor. <laughs> no, Connor would blow everything up. Oh. Okay, what? don't say any more because no, I mean, this might be a wow! Just, I can't wait. Just tell us what happens at the yeah. end. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the things I love about Brian is he is a man who holds a strong opinion, okay, and is not afraid to share it with us. OK, and I'm, uh, I wonder if I could ask you some things. Feel free to chip in <laughs> and ask your opinions on these modern trends, phenomena, oh, 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 events, God. so on and so forth, OK? Yeah. So, and, Brian, what? don't hold back. OK. <laughs> We're doing fairly quick fire. I've got a lot to get through. Feel free to chip in. OK. okay. Selfies. <laughs> fucking horrible. OK. <laughs> social media. Equally fucking horrible. <laughs> Are you on any social media? I don't fucking know. <laughs> 
Reality television. Ah! OK. <laughs> Rupert Murdoch getting married at 92. Good luck. <laughs> the Kardashians. I don't even know who they are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Well, you're not on social media, so <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know why I feel. OK. Uh, speedos. Do you wear a Speedo? No, fuck that, no. no, no. <laughs> Greg, I bet you wear Speedos. Oh, I've, I've got some Speedos, and let me tell you, it is uniquely revolting. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you want to wear Speedos? Are they not course? quite comfortable, Speedos? No. Oh. no. OK, no. good answer. <laughs> the elastic gets you in here. <laughs> it does, sorry. You should go up a size. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're doing. You're doing the same as me. I'm still buying a 34-inch waist. I'm falling. OK. Cannabis. Love it. <laughs> it's a big fan. Love it. Because it's legal where you live, isn't it, now? Yeah. You don't smoke it, though, do you? Mm. <laughs> well, you don't... You don't, you don't you prefer the gummy? Ah! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How you talking? Edibles. Uh, edibles. You have a prescription for it as well, don't you? I do, yeah. What's the, what, what ailment have you made up? Uh, what ailment do you suffer from <laughs> to get the prescription? I, I put life. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, I think we all need something to help us through that these days. That okay. did it. We, uh, me and some friends went to... My first Glastonbury was in 1990. And we got, we got sold. I don't know what we got sold. <laughs> but, but we smoked it. And um, then we, we were walking along afterwards, and one of my friends just suddenly physically disappeared. Just, <laughs> like, we all looked around and went, oh, my God, where's... Where the fuck's he gone? Because <laughs> uh, there was just no sign of him whatsoever. And I thought, oh, man, I'm tripping, I'm tripping. <laughs> and then I heard this cough, and we looked down, and my mate had fallen into a swamp. <laughs> and he was literally up to his neck. <laughs> and, and there was no panic in his eyes at all. <laughs> and we all just stared at him, and he, he looked up and he went, Apparently, lads, <laughs> I'm in a swamp. Brian's going to stay with us, Ruth and Greg are going to stay with us. Well, don't go anywhere because up next we'll be joined by Jasmine Sawyers and you won't want to miss Arlo Park singing at the end of the show. See you after the break. Jasmine, shall I call you Jasmine or do you prefer jazz? Let's go with jazz. You prefer friends. jazz. Okay, first of all, I want to say, uh, I was just told this the outfit you're wearing, you made this. Yes. You made it yesterday. I made it last night. It's amazing. <laughs> it looks great. Did you, did you study Did you study this at college or something? Or? No, I learned it over lockdown. On lockdown, where from? YouTube. YouTube? Yeah, there's so many 17 year olds doing crazy things with sewing machines. Um, so I got involved. You see, that is a productive lockdown. <laughs> what did you learn during lockdown, Greg? I learned how to fold socks. <laughs> <laughs> Ruth, what did you do during lockdown? I do that garlic nettle. What was it? Pesto. You made a garlic. <laughs> <laughs> I did what everyone did. Wild garlic. Pesto. I don't think anyone else is doing <laughs> that, Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, uh, was lockdown productive for you? What did you I do? loved it. What did you? No, yeah, I know. But... <laughs> First thing I did that day was peeing apart in front of a stranger. Um, it was a British record, so you have to do a drug test straight away. OK, so it wasn't um, recreation. A British was record a... is to pee in the park in front of a stranger. No, pee in the park. pee in a park, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> that's just a ritual we do. Sorry, sorry, I got that quite wrong. Different no. party. <laughs> Different party. <laughs> we've, all, we've all kicked off an evening by peeing in a park. Yes, <laughs> I know. That, I didn't, that's why I didn't think there was anything unusual about yeah. it. <laughs> But, but you knew you were, it was going to be clean, so you weren't worried about that. But it's oh, just a yeah, bit of a no. strange thing it's to just, do. You have to do it. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's part of the process. So that was that. And then by the time that was finished, I was hoping, OK, maybe a little celebration tonight, get back to the hotel, food's run out. Oh, no. Um, so I found this tuna pot in my room. I haven't eaten anything. I'm scraping the lid off, going, I haven't got a spoon. So I've fashioned the lid into a spoon. 
nice celebratory victory meal. I mean, it's nice to know we're looking after our athletes. <laughs> <laughs> that's terrible, isn't it? The that, conditions are that, so awful. That's all. Yeah. Was that it? Yeah. The food just, there was no food in the hotel. It was, um, it was late by the time we got And done. you just won. Yeah. yeah. Fuck me. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so the next Olympics is 2024 in Paris. Yeah. You're training for that, I believe, or you're getting ready to train for that. Yes, getting ready to train for that. That'll be the next Olympics, but we have the World Championships okay. this summer in Budapest. And if you had achieved that jump at the last Olympics, you would have won gold. Yeah. So if you can do that at the next Olympics, wow. it's a probable gold. It's a possible gold. There are women that can go further, um, but seven metres is always in contention for the gold. what people look for. Are you good at sports? What do you think? <laughs> I tried to do um, Couch to 5K. And, um, Hold it. I... People laughed even when you just said I tried it. <laughs> Which even I thought was a bit off, to be honest with you. I, d I did it for three weeks, and then I was over in my local park. I used to run round... I live in South East London. I used to run round the park. And after three weeks, when I was probably up to half a K, um, I used to go and have a, a reward coffee afterwards in the park. <laughs> And um, the guy who runs my local cafe came over and sat down and went, Greg, me and some of the locals have been talking and we don't think you should run anymore. <laughs> <laughs> because we think you're going to die. <laughs> Jazz, here's the thing about... Because I knew of you before I, I didn't equate you the same, because I'd seen you on The Voice. Oh, yeah. And I didn't know it was the same Jasmine... Uh, who was doing what you do on the sports field. So when did you... What year was it that you were on The Voice? So I went on The Voice in 20... It was the 2017 edition. Um, but I actually did my first audition the day after I got back from the Rio Olympics. Because Jazz has an incredible voice. Mm. Um, I, I might say... Because you got selected by... Who was it who said you? Was it Will? Will I Am, yeah. Will I Am turned round for Jazz on The Voice. I don't even remember this, but yeah. What? It's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. There's two moments of triumph you watch. So, how, how did that compare? When Will turned round for you in front of him, how did that compare to doing the seven metres? Oh, the seven metres takes it, but I tell you what, that was way scarier. That was way more intimidating to stand there on that stage than it is to stand on the runway and compete. That's interesting. Why? Because when you long jump, they measure it, and you can't argue with that. If you win, you win. If you jump seven metres, then it's there in black and white. I could go out, have the best performance of my life, I think. You... The whole audience thinks it's horrible. I, you know, you're being, it's subjective. You're being judged yeah. in a way that you're not in sport. Well, good luck at Budapest. Thank good you. luck at Olympics. And already, congratulations on that incredible jump. That was amazing. So, that's yeah. 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 phenomenal. Thank you so much for being here. So, we've got time for. Uh, there's one more little thing I want to do before the show, because earlier on we were talking about the kind of uh, fan base that Greg has, okay? And uh, we had a look on Mum's Net. <laughs> <laughs> and on Mum's Net, there's a lot of uh, a lot of women, I assume, mainly women on Mum's Net, and they have written about you and they've said, um, well, I think I think complimentary things, and I wondered if we could enjoy some of them and see your reaction to them. <laughs> but seeing as we have one of the great kind of stage actors of all time here, Brian Cox, I wonder whether he would mind reading them for us oh. and give us the full oh. gravitas. All right, okay. So these are. Cause what are these? Sorry, Jonathan. Oh, these okay. are. These People actual, from Mum's Net these writing are about me. These are actual comments about you, praising you and expressing an interest stroke desire in you on Mum's Net. And I thought Brian <laughs> might like to read some up for so you I go. mean, none right. of these so, people And I knew you'd naked. be too modest to do it yourself. So, <laughs> okay. OK, Brian, take it away. I feel like you could ride him like a bucking bronco. <laughs> and, he'd, and he'd have a takeaway with you in bed. <laughs> During. No judgment. <laughs> no judgment. I would climb him like a pole and ride him like a mad dog through hell. <laughs> These are mums. A hundred percent sex god, even though he's the same age as my dad. <laughs> <laughs> I would smash him like a Greek plate. <laughs> I'm watching Taskmaster and getting fanny gallops. 
Uh, I never heard that phrase. You ever heard that phrase before? <laughs> Call me. <laughs> so this last one I don't understand. I prefer Alex Horn. <laughs> I didn't know Alex had a mum's net account. Yeah. <laughs> Brian, thank you for bringing him to life, as only Thanks you can. Thank you, Brian. It's okay. a real highlight for me. It was, it was a great thing. OK. Thank you, Jess. Thank you, Brian, so much for being here again, of course. Thank you, Ruth. Good luck with the show. I can't wait to see you on stage. And Greg Davis, ladies and gentlemen, let's say thank you to all my guests tonight. Thanks to all my guests tonight. We'll be back next week with Michael Bublé, Lily Allen, Desiree Birch, Russell Crowe and Ed Sheeran will be chatting and performing in the studio. Oh,